Good evening, everyone. Oh, it's okay. You guys can talk in church. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> uh, welcome again. Welcome again to uh, our presentations that we've been enjoying, uh, Living with Hope. And tonight we have a new uh, speaker, and he will be sharing God's word. And so we're just so thankful. If you're coming right after work, we, we thank you for that. And um, if you are watching us online, we also thank you. So at this time, we're going to ask that you bow your heads with us uh, as we begin with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just want to thank you once again for your Holy Spirit. We want to thank you that, that God, it's through your Holy Spirit that we even have the capability to, to hear your voice. And so, Father, we've heard your voice. We've made that decision to be in this place, Lord. And so, Father, we just ask that, uh, that your angels surround this place, that your Holy Spirit infuse into our, your manservant tonight, that you be with Brother Enrique. And, Lord, as we partake and open the word, help us, God. Help us to, to lean in, to study, to learn, and more importantly, to apply. Uh, thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Why don't we stand as we sing a song, and then afterwards we'll get into the study of tonight. We can have the music.
Let us bow our heads. And those who can, I'm sorry, let's kneel for opening prayer. Those who can. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus paid it all, Lord. When we came short, Lord, your grace gave more. When by our sins, Lord, we don't measure up. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, for he paid it all. And Lord, we have access now through the Father, not through our merits, not through uh, who, whose child we are or how much money we have in our bank account. No, Lord, we are here because your mercy allowed it. And so, Father, I pray a special blessing over your manservant tonight, that you bless the lips of Brother Enrique as he shares with us your word, God. Thank you so much for what you do for us, and thank you for every person here who is in the house, and in the house of prayer, Lord, as well as those who are watching from home. Please bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we want to thank everyone for being here. Tonight we have our special guest speaker, our first elder, uh, Elder Enrique Alegria. So the time is his. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, my topic tonight is Revelation's New Life for a New Millennium. Have you ever needed a little extra money? Have you ever wondered about a job you would quickly bring you extra cash if you need it? An American Christian in college, a college student was running short of money to pay for college entrance fees books and tuition. He knew that he would have a look for the best possible paying summer job to be back in college the next year. Randomly searching through the newspaper one day, he saw an advertisement for a company hiring college students to cut lumber deep in the forest of Canada. At first, he was hesitant. He knew these lumberjacks were a pretty rough bunch. As Christians, how could, you, how could he survive the three months in the summer at a lumber camp with this alcohol drinking, smoking, cursing men, but he needed the money, so he applied for the position. All summer, he worked with these non-Christian men, cutting trees and hauling lumber. At the end of the summer, he received quite a sizable paycheck. When he arrived back in school and shared with his friends his summer activities, one of them asked him, as a Christian, how did you ever survive with these rough men all summer? They were drinking, smoking, carousing in town, and cursing every day. The young man responded, it was quite simple. I determined that they would never find out I was a Christian. In the last days of Earth history, neutrality will not do. God is calling on everyone to take us to, a, to take a public stand. We will not be able to see on the fence. The entire world will be called to openly, publicly declare whose side they are on. The truth of God's word gives us something to stand on. Our theme for this meeting is, if it's in the Bible, I believe it. If it disagrees with the Bible, it's not for me. The book of Revelation reveals a good and incredible love who never forces our allegiance or coerces our will. Throughout the book of Revelation, he invites us to come to him freely. He says, Revelation 22, 17, whoever will, let him take the water of life freely. In Revelation, Jesus is pictured as a lamb who dies to gain our ultimate freedom. God is calling our people to be faithful to him. He is calling them to lovingly keep his commandments. He invites them to publicly declare their loyalty. 
to declare their allegiance to him. How do we take a stand? In Revela Revelation points us to the right direction. Revelation 1, 5, and 6. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Does God have a visible symbol we are washed in the blood of Christ? He does. Baptism is the symbol of commitment, loyalty, and allegiance to Jesus Christ. Jesus instructed his disciples with these words. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and do. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. When we are baptized, we declare our allegiance. We take a public stand. We show whose side we're on. Yet many Christians are confused over the basic Bible ordinance. How many kinds of baptism are there? Some churches sprinkle babies. Others pour water over the head of a baby or young child. One denomination practices olive oil baptism. I even read of a church that sprinkled rose petals over the head of his youth, declaring they were baptized. One pastor took his youth out into the mountains and so-called baptized him by letting them lay in the snow and covering it with it. When he was questioned about this method, he said, it doesn't make a difference whether the water is liquid or solid. Was this pastor right? The Bible declares that there is only one true method of baptism. It clearly says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one biblical method. Would you agree with me tonight that the best way to discover the true method of baptism is to discover how Jesus was baptized? If we are baptized the same way Jesus was, we certainly can't go wrong. Mark 1, 9. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came to Nazareth of Galilee and, I, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. When Jesus was baptized, he went down into the water and came up out of the water. He was immersed. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lighting up on him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus' baptism by full immersion was a significant event in his life. Your baptism will be a significant event in your life. There were two special things that happened to Jesus at Jesus' baptism. First, the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus to give him, to give him supernatural spiritual power to face the temptations of the evil one. The Bible promises that when we are baptized, we too will receive the same spiritual power. Wouldn't you, like to, would you, wouldn't you like the spiritual power in your life? I came upon Jesus, and, I, and it will also come up. It, it came upon Jesus, and it will also come, come upon us. He received power at his baptism, and as we, by faith, open our hearts to him, we will receive the Holy Spirit at our baptism. The scripture says, Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. The second thing that happened at Jesus' baptism, what the Father spoke to him from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, Matthew 3:17. Every time a child of God responds to the call of Christ and is baptized, taking a public stand for our Lord, our Lord heaven is pleased. When you are baptized, once again, the Father will say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Believers down through the centuries have experienced the joy of making full commitment to Christ through baptism. Sometimes they have been the only members of their family to do so. Sometimes they have been the only members in the city or village or tribe. God calls us 
singly and alone. He certainly did that with the Ethiopian returning from Jerusalem. As the Ethiopian read scripture, God miraculously led Philip to him. Philip explained the word of God to his prominent Ethiopian. He answered his questions and made a strong appeal for this man to fully completely dedicate his life to Christ. The Ethiopian responded, thrilled with this new relationship with Jesus, he longed to be baptized. His request is found in the book of Acts. Acts 8, 36 to 39. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the Enoch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the Enoch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now, when I came up out of the water, let's pause here for a minute. These verses teach us some <laughs> vital truths about baptism. The Ethiopian was baptized. He openly accepted Christ. His baptism was, pu uh, was a public decision that he was taking a stand. Both Philip and the Ethiopian went down into the water. The Ethiopian was fully immersed. Philip lowered the Ethiopian gently below the crystal clear water as a symbol of Christ's ability to cleanse the entire person from sin. The whole person must be immersed because the whole person has sin. Every part of us go under water because every part of us has sin. We need a lot more than sprinkling. We need to be cleansed totally. We need Bible baptism, full immersion. In fact, you may not be aware of the meaning of the word baptism. Baptism, what does it mean? The Greek, the Greek word baptize means to dip, to immerse, to plunge underwater. If a Greek woman desired to completely change the color of a piece of cloth, she would plunge it into the water. The Greek word for that action was baptizo. Baptism by immersion was certainly the practice of the ancient churches. Archaeology reveals baptismal sites in these churches in the early centuries. Ancient churches reveal the method of baptism use. Here is an ancient Christian church site with a baptistry near Ephesus, today's Turkey. The size of the pool-like structure, according to the archaeologists and historians, demonstrates the fact that in those days, only adults were baptized by immersion. This is an early Christian church in Philippi. In the remains of the church, we see an early baptistry where the New Testament Christians baptized believers by immersion. St. John of Lateran is the second largest church in Rome. It's the most famous church in Rome after St. Peter's Cathedral. If you walk through the narrow alley way on to the back of the church, you discover something quite remarkable, a beautiful baptistry. Our Roman Catholic friends practiced baptism by immersion as late as the 13th century. The baptistries in these ancient churches clearly reveal that the church practiced Bible baptism by immersion for hundreds of years. Here is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You may be familiar with the bell tower, which is world famous because of the angle at which it is leaning. You may not be as familiar with the baptistry behind the tower where our Roman Catholic friends practiced baptism by immersion for centuries. One of the most remarkable baptistries in the world is found in Cappadocia, a city refuge deep, in, deep within the caves of southeast Turkey, where Christians found refuge from the oppressors in the Middle Ages. This, let's enter in, the, in through the carved rock into this secret city of refuge and place of worship. Here, carved in rock, is the baptistry where these faithful Christians baptized by full immersion. Immersion was a practice of the New Testament church. Jesus was baptized by immersion. The disciples baptized believers by immersion. 
the early church baptizing merchant and believers through the centuries have followed the biblical practice. It was not until the Council of Ravenna in A.D. 1311 that sprinkling and pouring were officially accepted as equal valid as immersion in the rite of baptism. The church introduced sprinkling as more convenient method of baptism. Many people put off baptism until they were near death. It was very difficult then for them to be immersed. So gradually, after many years, sprinkling was accepted as equally valid as immersion. During this series, we have seen many practices that have slipped into the Christian church. We have no foundation for description. For example, Sunday worship, the concept of the immortal soul, and sprinkling have, the basis in, have no basis in the Word of God. God is calling us back, back to the Bible, and back to the true biblical method of baptism. What is the meaning of Bible baptism? Romans 6, 3. Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we, buried, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also should walk in newness in life. When you go into that water, it is saying, Lord, I accept your death on the cross for me. It is saying, I want my old way of life to be buried, and I want to live new in Christ. What does baptism represent? Baptism, dying to old sinful way, uh, way of life. Is there something you did a year ago, five years ago, or ten years ago? Something that haunts you today? Something that troubles your soul today. When you walk into the waters of baptism, you're dying to all those sins in the past. You are dying to that guilt of the past. You are dying to that condemnation of the past. Everything in the past is cleansed. Burying our sins in the watery grave. Now, somebody says, wait a minute, though. Does God forgive me every time I confess my sin? Sure he does, but look, have you remembered every sin you ever committed in your past life? When you walk into the watery grave of baptism, it is saying, God, I give my whole self to you. All the sins I remember and all the ones I don't. Lord, you just count my whole past life, sin and guilt. I am going to go under the water and everything is cleansed, whether I ever confess it or I didn't. And I am going to come up a new man, a new woman in Christ, and I'm going to start a new slate and begin a new life. Raising up out of the water to walk a new life. It's one thing to have a new car, a new suit, a new dress, or a new pair of shoes. But I'll tell you something, the most exciting thing in life is a new life. You can walk through the water and the old life will be gone forever. You will have a clean slate before judgment bar in heaven. You can raise up out of the water to walk a new life. This is the symbol of the resurrection coming out of the water. The Bible says that Sunday keeping is not the symbol of resurrection. Baptism is. You come up out of the water with the Spirit filling your life to live a new life in Christ. You come up out of the water smiling, happy and cheerful, rejoicing in Jesus Christ. Baptism doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you're committed. Somebody says, should I wait until I am perfect to get baptized? If you do, if you do, you will never move ahead in the Bible in baptism. Baptism doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you are committed. Baptism is not the end of the Christian life. It is the beginning. It is a definite decision to walk through the water. Baptism gives us a new sense of direction. We say, God, I am yours. Baptism gives us a new sense of freedom. I am Christ. Baptism 
gives us a new spiritual power in our lives. What happens when we are baptized? Every sin is forgiven. Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. How many should be baptized? Everyone. Somebody says, wait a minute, what about the thief on the cross? Was he ever baptized? Where, where would the thief have gone if he had come out, out of the cross? Where? He would have gone to be baptized. So the Bible says baptism is for everyone, not just a select few. At baptism, sin is forgiven. At baptism, the Holy Spirit empowers us. The Spirit is given to us, Mark 1.10 and Acts 2.38 and 39. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has a gift for you. When you're baptized, you too will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. When God calls you to the baptism and you're cleansed, he promised you the gift of the Spirit to empower your life. We are adopted into God's family. We become part of the body of believers. Acts 2.41 then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. When you are baptized, you gladly receive God's word. Have you been gladly receiving God's word here during the Revelation of Hope series? Have you been learning new truths? How many of you have learned something new at these lectures? You've been learning God's plan for your life. You have been discovering new truths from his word. It is now time to make a decision. The Spirit of God has been speaking to your heart. It is now time to follow his truth. Many people wonder how baptism relates to church membership. Do people who were baptized also join the church? Acts 2.42 And they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. When baptized, you become part of God's body of believers. His Sabbath keeping, commandment keeping. Adventist people, just like it says here, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. You want a church that is a Bible-believing church, don't you? You want a church that follows in harmony with the teachings of God's word. This is Sabbath-keeping church. When you're baptized, your sins are forgiven. When you're baptized, your life is cleansed. When you're baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. When you're baptized, you become part of the worldwide Sabbath-keeping fellowship all around the world. It is an international community of faith. God is leading people to all nationalities, languages, and religious persuasions to his last day, Movement Day. He's gathering them into the final worldwide Sabbath-keeping Adventist movement. He's leading men and women today in unusual ways. What steps should a person take before being baptized? The steps to baptism. Number one, repent a genuine sorrow of sin, of sin. Have you come to Jesus and said, Lord, I believe you alone can forgive my sins. I believe that you alone are my Savior. I believe that you alone can give me the power to be a new man and a new woman. I have. If you have, you have taken the first step on this journey of faith. Repentance is being sorry enough for my sins that I'm willing to turn away from them. Repentance means my attitude towards my sin has changed. Number two, believe. 
an acceptance of Jesus as both Savior and Lord. If you repented of your sins, if you believe that Christ is your Savior and Lord, and thirdly, learn instruction in the essentials of the biblical faith. We are going to be growing and learning in all of our lives, aren't we? But if you understand the basics of biblical faith, the essential truths of this world, God invites you to make that decision to be baptized. During this series of meetings, have you learned new truths from God's Word? It is now time to commit to follow Jesus all the way in the Bible baptism. What if you have been baptized already? There's an instance in the Bible when people were rebaptized. Here it is. The Apostle Paul was preaching in the upper coast of Ephesus, and a group of people came to him. Acts 19, 2 and 5. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Paul instructed them more fully and through. They had once been baptized by immersion already. Paul rebaptized them by immersion. They wanted to walk in all the light of God's word. There are two reasons to reconsider baptism. An individual, an individual may desire to be rebaptized if they once were baptized and departed from Christ, but not long to return. But now long to return. You see, you don't get rebaptized every time you sin because you did. People would be rebaptized all the time. If you turn your back on Christ, baptism by immersion is a symbol of death to the old way of life. It is a symbol of burial to the old way of life and resurrection to the new way of life. If I walk away from the new way of life, if I disbow the things I once believed, if I turn my back to those teachings and truths and on Christ, I come to a series of meetings like this and God stirs my heart. God moves my heart and I say, I want to accept. I want to come back all the way. I've slipped away. I backslidden. I drifted away. It's time to get serious about the Lord. Come back to Christ and be rebaptized. They're committed Christians who have discovered the truth of God's word and desire to be part of his commandment, keeping people. There are lovely Christians. They love Jesus so much, they love him with all their heart. They come to a meeting like this and are like John's disciples. They had some of the truth, but have learned more. You too may desire to, be re to get rebaptized. It is a choice you may want to make. If you're committed Christian, you, are, you discover the truth of God's word, and you say, look, I want to have the errors in my past washed away, and I want to be part of God's commandment, keeping people. If this is your desire, there's a biblical precedent for being rebaptized. The Bible doesn't seem to say you must do that, but God stirs you. We would not, we would not forbid you. We would say, come into the baptismal pool. God is calling you. If you're like John's disciples and have part of the truth, but now see his light in, of truth, move forward. If you're a Christian, by going into the water, you are now, you're not denying your Christian experience. When, John, when John's disciples were baptized, they did not deny their previous experience. They said, we have learned a larger body of truth and want to move ahead. We want to further the truth that God has. If that is your desire, make that decision to follow Christ. How important it is, is baptism? Nicodemus came sick in Jesus at night, and Jesus said, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless he is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. 2 Corinthians 6 2. Behold, now is the acceptance time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no need for you to wait. Now is the day to seal in your heart. Now is the day to say, Lord, I want my sins forgiven. 
I want to be cleansed. Now is the day to say, I want to look forward to baptism and have the Holy Spirit fill my life. Now is the time that I want to join men and women around the world that are keeping God's commandments. Acts 22:16. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. All of heaven is waiting for you to take that stand for Christ. All of heaven is waiting for you. Pastor Duane was traveling to the village of Nakaloka in Central Africa for a baptism. In Nakaloka, he met several people who had, prepared to be, to, who had been prepared to be baptized. In fact, they had waited almost a year for a pastor to come. The pastor told them that the next day he would be there for the baptism. The next day, when the pastor returned after having a large baptism in another area, some of the people planning to be baptized were at the village in the, in the forest, cutting trees. They thought that it was the following day that the pastor was going to be there for the baptism. The pastor went ahead. The candidates who were there were examined and baptized. The hour was very late, and the pastor had to go to a distant village that night. As the pastor finished baptizing the last person, several ladies came out of the forest and, were, and when they saw what was happening, they said, oh, we misunderstood. We want to be baptized too. The pastor had to schedule a keep it, to keep and said, I'm sorry, I must go to Nakoshwe. Next time we're here, we'll have another baptism. Bertha and her friend felt very bad. As the pastor drove away in the Land Rover, she and her friend began to walk because they knew that in the forest, a large tree had fallen across the road the day before. And they thought that when the pastor came to that tree, he would turn around and come back to see them walking and, and stop and baptize. But the pastor didn't have to stop because someone cut the tree that day with a machete and had moved, had moved it aside. The pastor kept driving on. When Bertha and her friend got to the, that spot and saw the tree that had been moved, they were crestfallen, but not deterred. They kept walking. They walked over 18 miles that long night. The next morning at sunrise, they arrived at the village where the pastor was sleeping and knocked on his door. The pastor was amazed to see Bertha and her friend who explained that they had walked all night long so that they could be baptized. The pastor said, you must tell, you must tell me why you walk, why would you walk all night long to be baptized? Bertha responded with these words, the pastor will never forget. Pastor, I'm so sick and tired of this old world. I want to go home and see Jesus. Do you sense that, that tonight is a decision night for you? Do you sense that God is calling you? Are you sick and tired? Or how, how many are sick and tired? Would you stand with me? Do you want to say, yes, Lord, I want to make a decision for you. I want to look forward to being baptized. Do you sense that tonight... God's calling you. He's leading you to make a decision. Yes, Jesus, I want to follow you all the way in the Bible, baptism. I want to follow you, Lord. I want to stand for you publicly. I want to be part of the thousands around the world. You may be a young person. Now is your time for, for a decision. You may be studying the Bible. You've been com coming to, the, to these meetings. This is the time to make your decision. You may have slipped away. This is your time to make a decision. This is a wonderful opportunity to say, Lord, I want to be baptized. I want my sins cleansed. Some people hesitate because they feel they're not yet good enough to make this decision. Others hesitate because of some problem in their life. But the song says, just as I am, I come to thee. If you have never been baptized the Bible's way, why not make your decision to follow Jesus all the way tonight?
his peace, his power, his cleansing, his joy will flood into your soul. Is that your desire? Will you raise your hand right where you are? If you have been baptized and slipped away, God is calling you back tonight. Will you raise your hand? This is your time to respond to the Spirit and return to the Lord. If you have been baptized before, but in this series discover the fullness of God's truth and want to be part of God's commandment keeping people, this is decision time for you. Would you raise your hand? All my friends, Jesus loves you so much. I want to pray for you now, and we will seal the decision with Jesus. Would you just come forward with your hands raised? And thinking you're baptized. Just come forward now. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to be here this afternoon. We thank you for the message that we have. We ask for your help and your guidance so we can do what we need to do. Father, you know our heart. You know our desire. You know our willingness. Come into our hearts and help us. Do your will. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please remain standing as we sing our final song. It is true that um, someone said once, you know, did, uh, did, did the thief on the cross really need to be baptized to be saved? And I, I remember an old professor saying, well, then, um, are you a thief? <laughs> uh, and if you say no, then you don't have an excuse. And then he says, are you on a cross? If your answer is no, then, then you still don't have an excuse. So whether you're not a thief or you're on a cross, if you've never been baptized, it's a decision you need to make. So... Uh, we're going to sing our final song. <clears throat>
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your message tonight. We thank you for the reminder of what baptism was and is, Lord. It's that moment in time in our lives, God, that our lives were changed. Lord, we didn't come out of the water perfect. We didn't come out of the world water a different color, but we did come out of the water with a different direction, a different point of view. And so, Father, every one of us in this room, Lord, perhaps have been baptized. But, Lord, maybe tonight we need a conversion experience. We need a change of direction, uh, where our life is headed, where uh, we put our priorities, God. May our priorities align with your will. May you guide each person here to make the decision daily, Lord, of renewing their lives with you, God. Thank you so much for your manservant, Brother Enrique. We thank you for every person here that is present and those who are watching online. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Just a quick announcement. Tomorrow night we will not be having any meetings. Um, for those of you who belong to the church board, we just want to reiterate the, 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 that tomorrow night at 7 p.m. we will have a church board meeting. And then we will continue Wednesday night with Brother Enrique once again as he shares God's word. So once again, we thank you for coming out tonight. We hope to see you on Wednesday. May God richly bless you and your family. Thank you so much.